CAR T cell therapy obviously has been one of the most um, beneficial therapies that we've ever had uh, in the myeloma space. Um, right now approved in patients that have had four or more prior lines of therapy um, with the caveat, two real big caveats. Number one, that the patients can actually, um, they have uh, the support system to come to the treatment center and stay here for a month. And the second most important thing is that they have the disease characteristics that allows us to select a collection date for them because collection dates and slots getting CAR T cell therapy is still at a premium at the current time. We still don't have enough slots for all the patients who have, um, you know, relapse refractory myeloma, especially for more prior lines of therapy. We don't have enough slots on, on CAR T cell therapies for all the patients. So the patient actually has to wait to get to their slot. And I, I will tell you today that the next slot that I have access to is eight weeks from now. So if I see a patient today or tomorrow that needs a CAR T cell therapy, they have to be able to wait that eight weeks or have their disease under control for the next eight weeks so that they can get to that slot. They stop their therapy two weeks ahead of the, uh, the CAR T cell slot, the collection slot. Then they get on, they get their T cells collected and then we can put them on uh, bridging based therapy. So those are two, you know, real big caveats of getting people to CAR T cell therapy. Um, I will say that um, we're getting smarter with this over time. So when patients enter their fourth line of therapy, because it's approved in four or more prior lines of therapy, that's when we're starting to say, okay, we're going to start looking for a slot for you. Even though you're just starting your fourth line, we're going to start looking because that slot might be three months from now. And we don't know what's going to happen with line number four. Maybe you respond, maybe you don't. But if you respond and I have a slot three months from now, that might be a great time for you to actually go to CAR T cell therapy. So we're trying to do CAR T cell therapy in the fourth line rather than waiting for five, six, eight, ten lines of therapy where waiting for those slots in the production of the cells becomes very challenging. Um, I do think that it in the um, in the real world setting in this this, you know, the space where it's currently approved in the four or more prior lines of therapy because of disease characteristics, because of the logistics, because of everything that goes into CAR T cell therapy, we probably have four patients getting um, a bi-specific T cell engager to one patient getting a CAR T cell therapy. It's about that. It might even be five or six to one. But so m the majority of people are actually getting the biospecifics because it is off the shelf, because it's easy access, and because I can start them two days from now or three days from now, rather than waiting eight, you know, eight weeks down the road for the, the CAR T cell therapy. Um, so that's actually, I think, a really important uh, caveat. Now, um, Siltacel and Idosol have both recently had phase three trials showing that you know, these, these therapeutics also work probably better than our standard care triplets in the earlier lines of therapy in patients, you know, with Idacel who had previously had two to four prior lines of therapy and in, in Siltacel one to three prior lines of therapy. But our biggest worry in the myeloma community is that, that the number of patients that are in that space is probably three to five times higher than the current patients in the relapse, the true four or more uh, lines of therapy in the refractory space. And we don't have enough slots for the, the people in this, where the space it is. If we open it up to the earlier lines, it's going to be really hard, hard in my mind to, to actually get all the patients who really truly need it to that, uh, to that therapeutic.